Okie dokie. Oakley dokley. Oddly doodly. Hey. What's up, girl? Hi. Yeah, what a busy day today. This is the, even though I got four lenses here, chillax. I could do math. This is the Fujifilm Trinity for wedding photography. To a broader extent, event photography also, but not specifically. It definitely is for wedding photography. There's a reason why I included a fourth lens here. Obviously, redundancy is God. And before I get into the lenses, let me first start off by stating that if you're doing a wedding when it comes to uh, the event, not the, uh, not the uh, ceremony, but uh, the event, the afterwards reception, if you don't have a power pack for your speed light, you're an idiot. And if you don't have a backup camera, then you're also kind of missing the boat. Um, but in no particular order, let's first start off with this. And I think it's still currently on sale. Correct me if I'm wrong. Of course, when someone else watches this video like a half a year from now, the lens is not on sale. So, well, let's assume it's on sale right now. It may not be in the near future, and it may not be right now. Anyway... <laughs> You can tell I've had too much caffeine today. The 8 to 16 millimeter Fujifilm. The 8 to 16 millimeter. This is an f 2.8 lens. Um, at $2,000, currently it's on sale for $1,500. This is it. This is essentially a 14 to 24 equivalent. No wedding photography would be complete without it. Absolutely necessary for those wide angle to near intermediate shots. And of course, as I said, 14 to 24 millimeter equivalent, roughly so, but the 8 to 16 millimeter. The 70 to 200 equivalent, and this is of course the 50 to 140, f2.8. Um, triple linear autofocus rail motor. Um, this is it. I actually, uh, I always take the... Uh, the monopod slash uh, tripod color off of this. I just have it on this since I just grabbed it out of my bag. This is it, the 50 to 140. Actually, a 70 to 200 is absolutely necessary for wedding photography. Well, how necessary? Uh, very necessary. Depends on obviously the event, the distances you're working at for the uh, for the ceremony, also too for the receptions. Um, getting uh, some people uh, leaving, coming in and out of the cars. Of course, it depends on what sort of wedding it is. But every Photographer I know since the dawn of time has always had a 70 to 200 or 70 to 200 equivalent, and uh, definitely this. This is a great lens, very fast. Um, is this lens that expensive compared to like a 70 to 200 to 28 G2 Tamron? No, it's not. People say, well, Fujifilm lenses are expensive. My answer to that is compared to what? This lens is made a lot better than the incredibly expensive, and I have it, the EFL current 70 to 200 Nikkor. It's. Uh, actually just a hair faster image output is uh, just as good it's actually a hair sharper than that of course even the tamron as i found out is even a hair sharper than the two thousand eight hundred dollar uh, fujifilm 7200 so not an expensive lens once again of course we have to say compared to what so that's it the 50 to 140 f 2.8 fujifilm x mount lens there we go and like i said this is in no particular order and very importantly, the lens that should... And this is also, too, the reason why you always have a redundant camera, because stuff is moving so fast. I don't know if you how many weddings you have or haven't done, but any wedding photographer will tell you that you keep uh, one focal length on one camera. It's not just as a backup for redundancy, you know, in case your primary camera fails, but grabbing the second one instead of swapping lenses. I mean, this is a reason... This is, there's two reasons why you always have a backup camera. One is so you don't have to change lenses. And two, for redundancy, because redundancy is God. And this is it, the 24 to 70 equivalent. This is the uh, uh, 16 to 55 f2.8. Also, too, importantly so, with tripod or monotopod use, um, this is a, uh, a video-rated lens. And, of course, I wrote the book on uh, Fujifilm use. You can download it free of charge in the link below. It's Fujifilm uh, Tricks and Tips, Helpful uh, Tricks and Tips working on the second edition currently. So this is at the 16-55 f2.8. Uh, if you're a X-series uh, camera photographer, I would not even think about doing a wedding without at least, of all the, the four lenses here, the one that you could not get away with not having realistically. Was, well, I could use the 18-55, you know, it's a really good lens, and it is a really good lens. 
And the video's fine, and it's not noisy for video use when I want to do some clips of the ceremony or the event. And that's also true, but no, compared to the 16 to 55 2.8, and I'm not about spending money, but this really is a necessary lens, and you are going to be paying for it with the money that you're receiving off of doing wedding work, assuming you're doing more than two or three weddings a year. I highly recommend, of all these four, absolutely getting the 16 to 55 2.8 for... Uh, for uh, your wedding work, just undeniably so. There really is no recourse to that statement that I just made, not for weddings. The fourth lens in this trinity, yeah, I know a trinity is three, and this is a fourth lens, so don't try to contradict me here. The reason why, and this is true whether you shoot FX or DX or... Uh, doesn't make any difference. And by the way, this is the best macro lens in the world. How can I say that compared to what? Oh, girlfriend. I have every super, super expensive macro lens ever made. Oh, I assure you I do. And this is the best of all of them. Insanely sharp, insanely fast autofocus. The one thing, kind of like sticking confetti on top of a cake, kind of like sticking melted cheese on top of that to hot turkey, you know, kind of like, um, I don't know, the ribs in a condom. <laughs> the extra, extra something. <laughs> Sorry about that analogy. Edit that out later is uh, the macro uh, photography uh, for a wedding work. And why would you use a macro lens for wedding photography? Every time, and trust me, everybody that's taken my advice on this reports back positively, oh, you're 100% right, I brought a macro lens to a wedding, and I did exactly what you said. People love the little fine nuance, like the little type of doilies that are in the uh, events. Pictures of the rings, um, a close-up of the bride's eye, um, uh, a close-up of the uh, miniature bride and groom on top of the cake, uh, a close-up of uh, the type of uh, uh, dressing or uh, um, icing that's on the cake, the little nuances that stick in people's brain about the wedding. People love it. You use macro photography for wedding ceremony and event photography the same way you stick uh, bacon bits on top of your salad, right? These three lenses are the salad of wedding photography. These are the, and macro photography is literally the bacon bits of uh, wedding photography. Trust me, if you take my advice on this, you will see that I'm 100% correct. I don't know of anybody that's done a video on wedding photography that's talked about this. Actually, it's so important, I think I'm going to make a separate video about this because I've not made a video about this, and nobody else has that I know of. There could be one, but I don't think so. But it is very, very important, and people love it. So, did I emphasize that enough? I think I did. So anyway, those are the four lenses I recommend for X-mount for wedding photography. The 50 to 142.8, the uh, 16 to 55 2.8, the 8 to 16 millimeter, and the 80 millimeter macro. You could also substitute the much cheaper and perfectly great, however noisy and slightly slow autofocus, but compared to most macro lenses, it's not. The 60 millimeter f2.4 macro Fujifilm lens. Great little lens. You can find it used really cheap. And uh, that's it. Hope you like this video. If you do, you always click the link below. Any donation is helpful because I bust my butt on phone calls and emails, and I don't know how much you think YouTube pays, but it ain't that much. I can assure you of that. Thank you for watching, and wait for it. Wait for it, Fujifilm. <laughs> Bye.